Well, it is the Easter holiday season, so what better time to talk about the cross? It's a symbol of the Christian faith. We see it everywhere on tattoos, at churches, on clothing, jewelry, but what does the cross mean for humanity? Joining me to discuss this is Lethbridge Pastor Rowan Crown of Amazing Grace Community Church. Thanks so much for joining me today, Rowan. Thanks for, thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, Pastor Rowan, lots of people wear crosses as jewelry and as a symbol of faith in Jesus. But in the time when Jesus actually lived, what did that cross actually represent? It wasn't so good, was it? No, it was, it was actually a death, death sentence. <laughs> ultimate, ultimate suffering. Uh, Cicero, who is a Roman uh, Roman. Uh, governor at the time or, or influential in Roman politics. This is what he says about the cross. He says, it is extreme and un un ultimate punishment for slaves. It's the cruelest and most disgusting penalty. So that was written at the very time about the cross. It was, it was grotesque. It was, it was the ultimate penalty uh, of death and, and suffering. Yeah, it was a torture symbol, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, you know, we we have a different look on it. You know, as you said, it's, you know, now uses jewelry and we look at it as uh, we have it in our churches as a symbol of, of, of Christ's redemption. But at Jesus' time, it was it, it was the ultimate symbol of, of, of suffering and punishment. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus uh, was crucified, what did, did he actually voluntarily go through for our sake? That is a great question. And we could spend the whole time on that very question, right? So there was, I believe there was a physical aspect to this, right? As Cicero said, it's the extreme and ultimate punishment uh, given to slaves, right? And it's the, it's the cruelest and most disgusting form of, of persecution, so to speak. It was, it was death. That's, that's from a physical standpoint, right? But there was also the emotional aspect that uh, Jesus had to endure on the cross, right? He was rejected. He was rejected by the people closest to him, right? They, they scattered at the time. And more importantly, because, and, and this is what this segment's about, the that power of the cross, he was rejected by God the Father. He had to endure the sufferings uh, you know, the Apostles' Creed, which is uh, one of our creeds that is the very foundation of our faith. It says this, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to hell, right? Now, there's great argument to say, did Jesus actually physically go down to hell and, and do that? Or some would say, well, it was... Um, experience, his soul was experiencing the very pain of hell uh, for us, right? It's, uh, it, it's, it's a thought that really, if you, if you dig deeply to that thought, he, he took on a lot for us, both on a physical, emotional, and spiritual standpoint. His soul, you know, was suffered hell for us uh, on, on the cross. So I, I think that's why it's so important to talk about the power of the cross because of what Christ had to suffer for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Christian faith, we believe that he went there to take upon our sins, right? So on the cross, did Jesus actually take that on himself? Literally every sin that was committed past, present, and future. Yeah, and what I, I would clarify that by saying he takes on the sin of all those who put their faith and trust in him, right? That's, that's why salvation is possible, because we put our faith in that Christ died for our sins, right? He, he, he did that for us who, who have faith in Christ. Now, for those who don't have faith in Christ, that same, uh, that same uh, opportunity of faith is there, for their sins to be put to death on the cross, and, and God, knows, God knows who that is. But um, it's not just for everyone, regardless of whether we put our trust in Christ or not, that our sins are forgiven. No, you know, it's, it's that, that point where we come to where we say, Christ, uh, 
forgive me, you know, where we repent of our sins. And he calls us, he calls us by his grace and we, we trust in him by faith. Our sins, he died for on the cross. I, I like to say it this way when I usually preach at Easter, is that when he's dying on the cross, he's looking forward to Rowan, uh, the, the mess and the sinful and the, you know, the broken person he is. And he's dying on the cross for me, suffering that physical, emotional, spiritual pain for me, right? It's, it's, it's very personal. And, and that's what makes the beauty of the gospel, the good news of Christ, so inviting and so, uh, so beautiful is that it's a historical act that Jesus did for us. Other religions, they say, well, this is what you need to do to earn this, right? Christ breaks the barriers and comes down to us and says, this is what I've done for you, or this is what I'm doing for you on the cross, right? So that's, that's what makes this so, such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Why was it necessary for him to specifically go to a cross to die? Some may argue that there were maybe some better options for God to reconcile humanity with himself. What do you think? Yeah, you know, uh, that's, that's actually a funny question. We, we could come up with all the kind of things that uh, we think would be better, right? You know, but if we view it in terms of who God is, who Christ is, what the Holy Spirit is, the Trinity, we know that this was God's intention, right? Uh, um, God had this designed perfectly based upon all of Scripture to have Jesus die on the cross, and I think it's important, based upon your previous question, that he, it was contextually using the most severe form of punishment at the time to demonstrate what Jesus would go through for us, right? So uh, it, it's amazing. It was all planned by God, I believe, as a sovereign God, but at the same time, contextually appropriate, using the very, the most grotesque form of punishment at the time to demonstrate to the world in, in history what the Son of God was willing to go to the cross for us for. Right. Today, it might look different, right? It, it could, you know, yeah. like, yeah. you know, uh, you know I, I would hate to, I would hate to make a definitive, yes, it would look different <laughs> if, it was, if it was today, right? You know, but I just think in God's plan, in history and time, he, he beautifully you know, and how can you say beautifully when it's such a, uh, a grotesque form of punishment, but he planned this according to his, his goodness and love for us who believe in Christ, right? You know, uh, that's what he intended. Right. Now, would the resurrection of Jesus not be possible without the cross? Yeah, like it, it, it had to be, it, it had to be that way. It's, it's like how I answered previously. It was God's plan uh, for this to happen and for Christ to conquer sin and death for us, right? Um, and it's important to recognize that really when we celebrate Easter and, and the cross and his, his death, we've got to incorporate the whole aspect of his incarnation. His whole life was something where he, he, he gave up his, his throne in heaven to put on human flesh, right? Um, he didn't sin. <laughs> he didn't, he, he didn't uh, succumb to falling out of favor with his father, right? So all that was part of that incarnation, that, that struggle to, to live a perfect holy life uh, in the midst of the world in which he lived, which culminated then in dying on the cross and then rising again. And, and, and that's where we say and we proclaim he conquered death and sin. Uh, and, and so, yes, he had to, he had to rise again. Philippians talks about, um, and it's in, it's in chapter, it's in chapter three, verse eight or 11. He talks about the power of the resurrection that is being given to us as, as believers. And so, yes, he did, he did have to rise again in order to conquer death, and so we receive that power of, of, of the resurrection as well. That's fascinating. So, Pastor Rowan, what would you say to viewers watching who have doubts about whether Jesus actually physically rose from the dead? 
Yeah, that that is that is an awesome question, and there's lots there's lots written out there about that. You know, this has been debated uh, for for centuries. This whole thing. I remember even myself uh, many years ago going to Scotland, uh, one of the heartbeats of some of the growth of the church um, in, in history, and 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 sharing this idea of of, of Jesus Christ and the gospel. And I remember a, a Scottish young man saying. Well, Jesus had a twin. He wasn't, he wasn't revealed. And so it was really Jesus' twin that they saw. So there's just all these theories about um, whether Jesus did rise from the dead, right? You know, but one of the things we have is we have the witnesses that proclaim this, right? That, that, that over a period of 40 days, he uh, lived on the earth. There were records of, and we have in the gospel of, Jesus roaming the earth. But probably for me, and if I was out there and I was a skeptic, probably for me, if you think about it from just a pure how people responded, you think about it. The disciples went from people who scattered away from Jesus, right, when he was, when he was um, executed on the cross, to then becoming the very founders and foundation of the church. Peter, James, John, willing to give their lives. Peter is believed to was hung up. Uh, he was crucified upside down uh, uh, in order to proclaim this truth of the gospel and how in the space of a few hundred years, this message of Christ became the leading religion of that time period, right? Th that in itself is, is a tidal wave of evidence that Jesus, Jesus did um, rise, rise again. And, and, and of course, he, he ascended as well. So I think for me, that, that, is, that is really important for me. First Corinthians talks about, talks about that too, the importance of knowing Christ as our Savior and, and the hope that is. Uh, Paul himself was a persecutor of the church, right? He came in confrontation with the resurrected, ascended Christ, that called him to be a missionary, and, and he was willing to suffer and die for his faith as well. So I just think beyond the fact that there's historical evidence of, of Jesus, Jesus rising again, uh, the tidal wave of what happened that preceded his resurrection ascension is just an overwhelming uh, response of, of, of the reality of this event. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus told his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. So what does that actually mean? Uh, I love, when, I, when you were going to ask that question, I love that question. If you think about it, that what Jesus said, he said that all in his gospels, right? So when the disciples heard this, one, they probably would have been confused. What's, what's Jesus talking about? Like, they didn't even know he was going to the cross, right? And so when they would have heard it, they would have automatically thought, well, that's the ultimate price. That's the ultimate death. That's a grotesque form of, of, of suffering. And so, um, you know, I, I, I wish I could be a fly on the wall or, you know, fly in the air at the, as they're having that discussion because I think the disciples would have been quite perplexed by what Jesus was saying. But I think after the resurrection, as they look back, they realize that this was the ultimate price of following Christ. Someone willing to give up everything, everything uh, to follow Jesus, willing even to suffer and die uh, to uh, be a follower of Jesus Christ. So I think putting in the reality of when Jesus said that to when the cross happened and then afterwards for us, I think it's a good reminder. It's just not a tag along for us as, as Christian. I'm a disciple. I get to take up my cross and follow Jesus, right? You know, it's like, wow, what is, what is that commitment for us? Uh, what does that mean for us in our lives? Exactly. Now, any final thoughts on what the cross means for humanity and what kind of power does it make possible for us? Yeah, I, you know, I want, can, can I read Philippians 3, 8 through 11? I think sure. it's just, I think it's just beautiful. It says this, indeed, I can't I count everything loss as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. 
For, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness on my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him, him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Let me tell you, I've done many funerals in the city. Funerals of people who, who believed in Christ, uh, people of funeral, people who don't believe in Christ. And there is a stark contrast. And the stark contrast is this, is those who believe in the power of the cross, right? At a funeral, there is sadness and lament and mourning. But there's this undercurrent of joy that this is not the final answer, right? For someone who doesn't know Christ, right? I still proclaim the gospel, right? But there's that lament and mourning and sadness, right? But there's no undercurrent of joy because they even live in the reality that there is no hope. And so I think the power of the cross reminds us no matter what we're suffering we're in COVID right now, coronavirus, all these things have been do done to us where we're struggling, mental health is struggling, people are facing all kinds of stuff. We have the hope in the power of the resurrection, regardless of what happens to us, that Jesus lives, right? And then in our death, we have the hope that this is not the final, this is not the nail in the coffin for our lives. This is the redeeming work of Christ in our life that this life is not the final answer. We have an eternal life to come. A Lethbridge pastor, Rowan Crown of Amazing Grace Community Church. Thanks again for having me. I'm Jeanette Roche on behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News. Thanks for watching and have a happy Easter.